Hi everyone, today I'm going to use this windmill that I made last year. All I did was take some Dollar Tree fabric and put it on the blades with some Mod Podge and I loved it. But I'm going to use it today for something else. So I'm just going to use four of the blades from the windmill. So I'm using my wire cutters to just disassemble the windmill. Now my hands are not that strong so I actually took this apart myself so it wasn't that bad. And once I got it where I wanted it, I put the little round thing back onto the middle and took this cute farm to table sign I got at Dollar Tree. I thought it was so cute as is, but I wanted to make it over a little bit just to put my style on it. I'm using everything again, so I'm just carefully taking it apart. I was just gonna use the paper on top, but a little bit later I do um, go ahead and paint it. So once I trace it out onto the scrapbook paper, got that at Hobby Lobby, like I said, I decided to paint the sign because I didn't want the black letters to show through since my paper was white. So one good coat, let it dry, and then used a generous amount of Mod Podge on the front of the sign before I put down the paper. Now I should have been a little more careful with the paper when I put my top layer of Mod Podge on, but I wasn't and I got some wrinkles. Um, it just didn't bother me enough to start over and you can barely see it anyway. And now I'm gonna attach the windmill to the sign with super glue gel and some hot glue. And I only put it in the places where I know the windmill's gonna to touch the sign. So I hold it down for a good five minutes just so I knew it was gonna stick. And then I took this adhesive stencil from Dollar Tree and put it down. And then I'm just gonna use some black chalkboard paint and a pouncy brush to put the paint on. And I just go really slow. I have this sped up like a lot. So I just go really slow, take my time, and make sure I don't press too hard so it doesn't bleed. And then I just peel it up and I love it. It does bleed a little bit, but it's easy to clean up. Um, and then I just go around the whole thing with my ink pad, and then I go up onto the paper and kind of scuff it up a little bit. And then I, I'm gonna put it back together. I do it exactly the same way that I took it apart. So it was super easy, and it looks so dang cute. It just that little change. I mean, it was cute before, but it's really cute now, in my opinion. Y'all let me know what you think about this first DIY. And here it is. I don't put any additional bows or anything on it because I just didn't think it needed it. But isn't this so cute? I love the use of, or reuse of the little windmill and it just fits this so perfectly. For number two, I'm gonna use this wood crate, not crate, palette. This is from Dollar Tree and the pig is from Walmart. So I'm just gonna give the palette a coat of white chalk paint. I think I actually gave it two coats. And then I take the pig and position it in such a way where um, when I trace it, every part of the pig is gonna be hitting a part of the palette. And you'll see that here in just one second. Just like that. And now I'm just gonna take some um, black chalkboard paint, same as before, and just fill in the blanks, or fill in between the lines. And I was very careful not to go outside the lines. Um, this was so therapeutic and fun. I had a really good time. So once I got the pig all colored in and he dried, I took this adhesive stencil from Dollar Tree. Again, I picked out a pretty pattern. Put that down on the pig where I want it to. And then this time I'm gonna be using white chalk paint and that stippling brush. I got those at Dollar Tree, three in a pack, and I love them. They're stiff-ish, but still soft, and they're just perfect for stenciling. I love them. And once I get that all filled in, again, I, I was more careful than before. I just peeled it up, and then I took the same brush and just went all over the pig just to kind of scuff him up a little bit, or her, whatever you want to call it. And now I just took the same stencil 
and put it on the edges. And then this time I'm gonna be using black paint just to keep with the black and white theme that we have going on today. I do the same thing here. I just stipple, stipple, stipple. And then I hit the edges with a pattern of the same type. And, and then I get my stamps. I wanted to put the word oink, but I actually go backward just to make sure I don't run out of room. And then I grab my little tiny paintbrush and put a little period at the end. And I think this is done. Um, one thing I do do, I added a little buffalo check bow to the hanger. But isn't this gorgeous? I love, love, love this. It makes me want to go to the farm and start decorating. <laughs> I don't have a farmhouse, but this is so, so cute. Okay, last but not least, I'm going to take some white chalk paint and paint this terracotta flower pot. And I do the inside as well. So using water on the terracotta pot before you paint it really helps smooth it out. I got that tip from my friend Brenda, so thank you, Brenda. And once I get the flower pot done, I'm gonna take this bead. It has a really large hole in it. And I love these beads. I do a lot with it because you can use really thick jute on it, which I'm going to later. So I'm just gonna paint the bead the same color. And then once it was dry, I drew on little cow spots. And y'all don't stress about this, just draw uneven spots, <clears throat> excuse me. Very easy. And when I painted these in, I wasn't real careful. In fact, I wanted them to look a little scuffed up in places, and you'll see me going outside the lines on purpose, just to make it look like um, cow fur, or hide the hair that is on, <laughs> I don't know what you wanna call it, but the little hairs that are on cows, it kinda makes it look like that in places. And that's what I was going for. My point is I wasn't real careful. And then I just started making little spots around randomly. Isn't that cute? And once that was done, I did the same exact thing with the bead, only I changed out my brush to make it much smaller. And for some reason, it, this, this project was so therapeutic to me, just filling in or painting in the lines-ish. I don't know, it was very therapeutic, so. I just took my time and did this and just added dots and scuffs here and there just to make it more realistic and cute. And once that was dry, I grabbed my um, flower pot again and some jute. So this jute, I'm gonna separate just one of the strands from it. I'm gonna put it aside because I'm gonna use it. And then for the one that had the two strands, I just made a loop at the top and then hot glue that together and then took the extra strand and wrapped that around. And I did use some hot glue. What? It's my dog coming to see me. Once I had it wrapped around, there's my little hanger. And now I'm going to just tie a knot below that and then feed the other end through the flower pot. And if you haven't figured it out by now, this is a little bell, a little cowbell. Once I pulled that through, I made a knot, and this one's gonna slide right up into the pot just to hold everything in. So when I hang it, it's not gonna come apart. And now I'm just going to thread the bead through for my little clanker and tie a knot, or actually I'm gonna put some glue down so it doesn't slip off. And then I'm gonna separate the strands there and tie a knot just to make it a little more interesting. And y'all, this is done. Um, I do include a picture of, look, look how cute that is. So this is done, and when I hang it up, I'm like, it would be cute with a bow. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like with a tiny little bow. I put a big bow on it, and it looked ridiculous, and <laughs> it just took away from the bell. So I just put a little bitty one right there. So let me know which one you like better, with or without the bow. But anyway, y'all, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Let me know in the comments which of these projects is your favorite. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. I will see you guys next time. Have an awesome rest of your day. Bye.